So now we'll go ahead and look at some posters and just talk about them. So in this poster, this is for a play and the designer was probably given these photographs. So often when you're designing for something like a play, uh, they will have a photographer that takes a bunch of photos of the actors and then you'll be given these photographs and you'll be able to use them in any way you want in the layout. And so the designer was really playful with the scale here, taking the woman's face um, and body and kind of making it large, really kind of intensify, intensifying the depth. And then you can see that it's a, just a really subtle uh, two color design. There's gray and black and orange here. It's another uh, great design. I love this bright pink, kind of a capti captivating photo. Um, this man with his eyes closed. Uh, then you have uh, the text kind of bleeding to the edge here. And then you have David Mamet in the in the D here, just kind, kind of being used as a frame. So you see how the pink is kind of balancing the design. It's also adding contrast and energy. This was a poster for a jazz festival, and you can see that the intended audience was actually uh, people who are really interested in jazz. So the idea behind the design was they wanted to get a feeling of jazz to kind of make it very playful, uh, somewhat chaotic, improvisational. And here's another example. You see these actual piano keys in the, dis in the background here. And those letters are just kind of interact, dancing with each other, very playful, um, trying to make us both feel the music as we look at the design. Uh, this is a series of posters, um, and we'll kind of go through a few of them here. So you see the name of the design firm here on the side, and then there's just, just very kind of well thought out, careful layout of text. And so it probably took them a long time to kind of line this up so precisely here at this angle. Um, there's kind of a um, complementary color scheme going on with the blue and the red, and then some a little bit of yellow and white added in. And you can see this kind of playful use of scale here. Uh, and what you can do in Illustrator is you can actually take letters and you can turn them into outlines and then you can manipulate them and morph them and turn them into these interesting shapes and that's probably what happened here. Another uh, poster in this series you can see that there's a consistency with where the name of the firm is being placed and there's this very kind of beautiful visual flow going on with the black and white just kind of seamlessly interacting here. And uh, we'll go on here to this very graffiti, um, illustrative design. And what's great about it is the all the information is kind of put here on these walls in the background space. So it's really using that space in a very playful way. Uh, this is Baby Doll, another play. And you can see that there's this kind of captivating, intriguing black and white image combined with this orange text uh, and they're really kind of being playful with the font here and outlining it in white making it kind of have that almost kid feel of playfulness and this is all done on a grid here with this very straight line of the text going down uh, the side here. Another example of an illustration and you can see this kind of really fun battle royale text up here and then this very sophisticated text on the edges. There's kind of uh, a very balanced feel with this design. There's text all along the edges here and then you have this kind of real tension between these two illustrated characters in the middle. Uh, another play, The House of Bernarda Alba. You can see color big grayscale image, so very common theme here. You see uh, that posters often have a very captivating grayscale image combined with kind of a bright, intense color for the text. And it actually makes the design very sophisticated, but you get a lot of content in there as well. The other thing you'll notice with these designs is that there's minimal text going on. There's not a lot of text. Basically with a poster, you want to get the information out there quickly. You want to 
get people interested and excited and give them the, the necessary information. If you put too much text in, it's just going to overwhelm the design. Uh, so this is very playful. This is a grid, obviously a grid pattern going on. There's all these kind of really interesting photographs in the background, bright red text. Another one, this feels very dark and kind of uh, foreboding here with this very, um, you know, dark figure with his hands out. It's kind of lightened up with the color scheme. It's actually not the color scheme I would have chose. It's kind of interesting, but it gives it kind of this um, lighter feel because of the green and the blue. Uh, this was um, Cyrano, and the thing with Cyrano was he had a giant nose, so they really wanted to profile the nose here, make it very much the focal point in the image and then they created a monotone image. And then what's really beautiful about this design is just the sophistication of the type layout. You can see it's all done on a grid here. Everything's lining up. Um, there's these columns of text. There's actually quite a bit of text in this design, but they laid it out so beautifully that it's not overwhelming. It's very digestible. So there's certain things you might read first and then second and third. And then when you got down to these columns here, which are kind of the, um, I think they're just the names of the people in the play. You don't necessarily have to read them, but they're there. You can see them if you get close enough. Uh, this was a student's design and just kind of showing how this in here, how you can be playful with text and you can pull down one side of it. Um, so always think uh, about what can be done, how can you unify, how can you create and merge the graphic with the text, or perhaps the text is the graphic. This was a, uh, a musician or a musical band and you can see the information here the name it's very clever the suit uh, and the time this is very surrealistic um, it's a good example of kind of a surrealist uh, surrealism being used in modern design with the image of the man and the horse kind of combined together very simple but beautifully done and here's another illustrative design uh, where you have these two little figures and this really hand-drawn almost kind of sloppy text but it's kind of fun and it's and the scale of it makes it uh, really a primary focal point and I love how the the illustrative characters are kind of interacting with this text here high school musical um, so basically what they would do with something like this is they take out the background completely so it's obviously a Photoshop job where they would take the the figures and they cut them out as precisely as they could and then they're kind of adding in this text here and there's a ton of text in this paragraph but it's kind of so compact and placed in such a way that it doesn't overwhelm Tristan and Yusult these are kind of the same character that two different versions of the same man and you can see uh, once again this grayscale um, kind of captivating photo with bright color in the text to create contrast and focal point and emphasis. Another example of surrealism with this kind of creepy eye and this cone um, and so yeah you can do a lot if you if you get good at Photoshop and you can kind of do photo manipulation and ch and change the scale of certain things in a photograph. It can be pretty interesting, and I like how the text is kind of mimic, almost mimicking the idea of sound here. A minute too late. Not about nightingales, and you can see how a monochromatic image can be pretty powerful, and especially when you pair it with. This is kind of a darker image, and then when you pair it with that bright white text, it really stands out and creates contrast, and also this visual hierarchy for the text. Power, another example of, of interesting crop here. I mean, it's so tight, and there's so much going on with just this simple um, profile of the man and the ear, and then they kind of lightened it up with the color of the text. Singing in the rain tons of text in this design uh, and they had to lay it out in a way where it was digestible so they created this block down here two blocks on the side it's kind of a fun uh, stroke happening with this text up here and, and I love how they kind of they like drew it on a path so it's not um, straight across it kind of mimics the energy of the song 
It's also a very uh, complementary color scheme. The orange and the blue uh, really create this visual pop. Okay, uh, very kind of a very Swiss feel or um, blue note feel here with this white text and this red saturated image and lots of black. I love this design, very sophisticated, where you have the white text that suddenly turns to black when it's on the lighter uh, part of the image. Um, you can see that there's actually not pure white here, except for when you get to these letters. Um, there's a lot of kind of muted grays. And then just, they did a beautiful job with that title. Another example of kind of using these little graphics a uh, monochromatic image that's been kind of saturated or intensely saturated with one color and then a graphics added and then kind of a second color placed in for contrast. Love this one. Love how the, the text is kind of going down the form here. Here's one where the text kind of surrounds it. They're kind of bleeding it to the edge and then framing it in, making it feel almost tight and constrained. I love the J's here. The scale of the J's is, is just making you concentrate on what a beautiful shape they are. And then you have the image, the black and white image. Um, there's a real subtle color palette going on with the greens and the kind of off-white, dark black. simple, communicates the message. Another example of that. Uh, so this is kind of abstracted. So you could see how this would be um, maybe a more complicated illustration that gets abstracted and abstracted until it's kind of the bare essentials of what the message is here. And then I love this playful text down here. So notice how they kind of individually uh, moved and shuffled each word. So they're still very organized on this in this kind of block here, this rectangular shape, um, but they've been really playful in the placement. They've kind of taken the letters and changed each letter individually, moved them up, moved them down. The kerning's been played with, um, the space between the words and the space uh, between each individual letter. Another example of just a really fun illustration where this text almost feels like the music. Love this one with the scale of the, it's John Coltrane, and you can see how they're really uh, fitting in so much information here, but they're using that large word here that's, that feels like jazz to me as their main graphic. Uh, clever. This is um, Secret History Presents, the Dirty Lung CD release party, made to look like a cigarette box. Here's the handsome furs. Kind of looks like a lithograph print. Love this one for Heineken. They what they probably did is they probably repeated a lot of these uh, people in the audience here. So they might have had, you know, three or four groups so I could actually see this guy is the same as this guy is the same as this guy so they probably just kind of photo photo kept photoshopping it so to give this crowd um, more energy this is Ladytron and you can really see how sophisticated these letters are very elegant sophisticated um, matching the mood of the music this fair Instant Litter, Weird Al Yankovic, you can see, I love how organic this is and just the color palette is great. Conway Twitty, beautiful illustration with this text really kind of working with the flow of the graphic, becoming almost part of the graphic. Mm 